Hi, this is John Adams from the Rehab Doc Documentation Guru, and today we're going to look at a speech therapy analysis statement. We're going to see whether or not it fits the criteria for a good analysis statement to begin with, but we're also going to be looking at some other things that might give us an idea of whether or not this is proving to, uh, to support reasonable and necessary care. So uh, let's read the statement. You'll notice I've got it in various different colors, and that's to highlight different sections of this statement. Patient responds well to therapeutic cues for safe feeding strategies and proper positioning. Patient continues to have difficulty tolerating upright position at 90 degrees during meals due to pain and discomfort. Patient also reports bouts of low blood pressure during therapy treatment with PT and OT this past week while sitting upright in her wheelchair. So let's look at what I've got highlighted there and italicized. Number one, it says patient responds well. That is an unqualified statement. It's not objectified. And so we would need to know specifically with objective measurements, what does respond well mean? Uh, then it goes on to say therapeutic cues for safe feeding strategies and proper positioning. Now, hopefully somewhere in the note that was written by this therapist, we have more objectification of what safe strategies are for feeding for this patient and we do have a sense of what proper positioning is, but we don't also, and that's a problem. You'll see as we go on with review. Now, patient continues to have difficulty tolerating upright position at 90 degrees during meals due to pain and discomfort. Now, we talk about the fact that we wanna compare function to underlying impairments. That's gonna be bullet number one below. But uh, in this case, we don't know what toleration means. It needs to be objective. Number one, what's the time frame the patient tolerates being up in the chair? How much of their meal, number two, can they complete because of this lack of tolerance, because of pain? So there's some things that I have questions about to determine what's the efficacy of speech therapy? What are the th barriers to keeping the patient from achieving the patient's goals? And how are we addressing it? And this sentence in and of itself is not really providing very good data. Going on, it says, patient also reports bouts of low blood pressure during therapy treatment with PT and OT this past week while sitting upright in her wheelchair. So that's good information, that's appropriate. The question then becomes is, is there anything that speech therapy can do about it? The other thing is, is speech therapy validating this as a potential problem because blood pressure abnormalities could potentially I'm not saying they always would, but could potentially cause problems with swallow dysfunction. So now that we've looked at the basic structure of this analysis statement, let's look at whether or not it fits the five criteria that I've laid out for you in previous videos on how to write a strong analysis statement. Number one, is there a comparison of remaining functional deficits and underlying impairments? Well, there is. In fact, there's uh, the function of sitting upright in the chair to eat a meal. So that's the function. And then we've got reports of two underlying impairments that are impacting or potentially impacting. One is pain. Now the next question should be, within the scope of practice of speech therapy, is a positioning issue causing pain something that speech would address? And in this case, it's pretty clearly no. That this is not within the scope of practice of a speech language pathologist. PT and OT are also in, so they should be addressing any positioning issues. Therefore, if the pain is causing the problems with patients, the patient's ability to finish a meal, does speech therapy need to see the patient? It's not quite clear at this point. Also, could speech therapy be assessing the blood pressure and making sure that this other underlying impairment is not also impacting the functional deficits? And it's not clear based on what's written here. And I would encourage the speech therapist to take blood pressure me measurements. The next one is discussion of positive impact outside of therapy, and that's patient caregiver report. Now, it says the patient responds well. It could be the patient's reporting or the caregiver's reporting the patient's doing better with swallowing strategies, and that would be good. Uh, we don't know, though, at this point, whether there's a positive influence of, spe of speech outside of therapy. Number three, barriers to progress the patient's now facing. Now, this is clearly outlaid as number one being the pain, but it's not objectified. And so that barrier is not well identified. And we don't know 
And here's the other thing. What is speech doing about it? And that's partly what number three is addressing. How is the therapist in this particular scope of practice treating this concern, addressing this problem? Number three, uh, this is related to number three, is there, are there any, or four, are there any new underlying impairments? And we do know that the patient's having blood pressure issues. We just don't know if there's an impact. And then lastly, number five, the necessity of ongoing therapy services. Uh, wh why would it be neither safe nor effective to discharge the patient from speech therapy at this time? It would appear that we've got definitely PT and, o and or OT concerns at this point. We do not know whether speech therapy is ongoingly needed. Uh, next question is, why is continued therapy reasonable and necessary? And the therapist doesn't really get into any details here about the necessity of their ongoing skill. And then lastly, why could a non-skilled person not continue progress on the goals? And if you look at it, what it says, it says that the patient is responding well to therapeutic cues for safe feeding strategies and proper positioning. Based on what's written, it, it appears clear that a non-licensed, non-skilled person could be taught how to cue the patient and how to position the patient. So these problems do not seem to identify a speech therapy necessity. So as a whole, I would say that this speech therapy analysis statement is ineffective for proving the reasonableness and the necessity of ongoing care for this particular patient. Anyway, this has been John Adamson, the Rehab Documentation Guru. I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Tell your coworkers about this channel. That would be greatly helpful. And please feel free to leave a comment suggesting further topics you would like to see in the future. For now, take care and make sure you get paid for what you do.